from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Pat McCracken, Johnny, Universal Adjustment Bureau. Hi, Pat. What's on your mind? 75,000 bucks. Yours is somebody else's. Johnny, ever hear of the Subala Diamond? Subala? Yeah, matter of fact, I have. It's a pink diamond, isn't it? That's right. One of the companies we represent wrote a $75,000 policy on it. The owner of the stone, a jeweler named Joseph Wentworth, was trying to sell it. So? So last night, the Subala Diamond was stolen. I'll be right over. Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of a man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Rolling Stone matter. Expense account item one, $1.20 cab fare from my apartment at the Office of Universal Adjustment Bureau. Pat McCracken gave me what additional dope he had, which wasn't much, and I headed for New York. That's item two, $26.40, and the apartment of Joseph Wentworth. I was just released from the hospital an hour ago. They kept me overnight for observation. Nothing serious, I hope, Mr. Wentworth? No. I was hit on the back of the head. At first, they suspected a skull fracture, but it was only a slight concussion. Well, you're lucky. Practically, my total asset stolen, and you call it lucky. You mean the Sabala Diamond? I borrowed heavily to purchase that stone, Mr. Dollar. I'm afraid I'm just about ruined. Well, if I'm not mistaken, it was insured for $75,000. You don't understand. The insurance money will barely cover the loans. The diamond wasn't insured for its full value. Oh, I see. And what's worse, I had a customer for it. I was almost ready to close the deal. Could have gotten at least 100000 maybe more. Uh, try to tell me exactly what happened, Mr. Wentworth. Last evening, Eloise stopped by the shop at 6. We were going to have dinner uh, together. Eloise? Eloise Barnes, my fiance. I started to close up, and I remembered I'd forgotten to put some things in the safe. She went down the street a ways to hail a taxi, and I went back inside. And left the front door unlocked? I must have. I was in a hurry. I opened the safe, and I heard a sound behind me. I started to turn, but too late. That's the last I remember. The police figure out what you were hit with? Yes, a heavy brass candlestick in my shop. Then when Eloise brought me to, the Sabala diamond was gone. Oh, just a minute. You say Eloise brought you to? Yes. You see, when I didn't come right back outside, she started wondering what had happened. She came in and found me lying on the floor. Uh-huh. Uh, how long have you known Eloise, Mr. Wentworth? About a year. Why? Mind giving me her address? I think I'd like to talk to her. Expense account item three, a dollar eighty cab fare to Eloise Barnes' apartment. Eloise looked, if anything, more expensive than the Savala Diamond. And I had the feeling that underneath that lovely surface, she was almost as hard. Her gray eyes never left my face as we talked, and I got the impression she had neatly weighed me, cataloged me, and put a price tag on me. Afraid I can't help you much, Johnny. Joe Wentworth apparently told you all there is to tell about it. You were out looking for a taxi at the time Wentworth got slugged. That's right. I feel sorry for Joe. That was a lot of diamond to lose. Ah, must be quite a stone. Mm, if you go for those things. I don't know. I guess some people really have a thing about diamonds. But aren't you, huh? All right. Just happens there are a couple of things I prefer. Like what? Like money and mink. Uh-huh. But now, according to your fiancé, you Just were... Just a minute. According to my what? Your fiancé. What with? Well, Johnny, that may be his idea, but it's not mine. Well, you're not engaged. Joe's been very nice to me, and I like him. But we're just friends, so far as I'm concerned. Oh, yeah. I'm afraid I'm not the engaged type, Johnny. I've tried it once or twice, but it didn't work. It seems to interfere with my hobby. Your hobby? Yes. Having fun. What's your hobby, Johnny? Well, at the moment, trying to find the Sabala diamond. Then what? Well, I I have been known to uh, have fun now and then. Johnny. Hmm? I hope you find the diamond. 
real soon. The invitation was printed in large type, but this was no time for an RSVP, especially since I remembered Wentworth mentioning a customer who had been anxious to buy the diamond just before it was stolen. I called Wentworth and got the man's name, Gerald Mantel, who had an apartment just off Fifth Avenue in the East 70s. Ah, yes, Mr. Dollar, the Sabala diamond, an exquisite stone. The pink radiance of it when it caught the light, positively hypnotic. Such a pity it was stolen. Mr. Wentworth tells me he was negotiating with you for the sale of that diamond. That is correct. Unfortunately, we had reached a stalemate yesterday. You see, he wanted more than the diamond is worth. Well, maybe that's a matter of opinion. Mr. Dollar, I am a collector and a connoisseur. I know what such things are worth. Oh, yes. I only hope it will be recovered before Friday. It would make things so much more enjoyable for me. What happens Friday? I am leaving for Europe. Oh? A business trip? Not really. As a matter of fact, more of an impulse than anything else. Uh Uh-huh. Anything wrong with that? Well, Mr. Mantell, that's a good question. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Our flag now numbers 50 stars. And behind each star, there stands yet another flag representing one of the 50 states. Alabama's state flag is of St. Andrew, the symbol of the Confederacy on the national flag of Scotland. Alabama's state capital, Montgomery, served as the first capital of the Confederacy, and it was on the steps of its capital building that Jefferson Davis took the oath of office as president of the Confederated States of America. The Scottish cross is in the form of an X, or saltier, and is also found on the state flags of Georgia and Mississippi. Perhaps it is the independent rugged spirit of the Scots that recommended its national symbol to the Confederacy as a symbol of its rebellion. Alabama's state flag, the flag of the 22nd state to enter the Union, was adopted on February 16, 1895. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Rolling Stone Matter. I went back to my hotel, stretched out on the bed, and went over the whole thing in my mind. Eloise, who liked the things that money could buy, and who supposedly had been looking for a taxi while Wentworth was slugged and the diamond lifted. Then there was Gerald Mantel, the collector, who was now suddenly leaving for Europe. Yeah, could be either of them. Johnny Dollar. You looking for the Sabala diamond, Mr. Dollar? Who's that? Well, that doesn't matter. I know where the diamond is. Oh, where? Not so fast, Dollar. I'm sure the insurance company you represent would pay quite a bit to get that stone back. The question is, how much? Oh, there's a bigger question than that, friend. Whether you're on the level or not. Suppose I can show you the case the diamond was kept in. Uh, would you be convinced then? Maybe. Antonio's bar on East 53rd? Yeah. Maybe there in an hour. Now, wait a minute. How'll I know you? I'll know you. Hey, wait a minute. Hmm. Item four, two dollars even drinks at Antonio's while I waited for my telephone buddy to contact me. A half hour went by, nothing happened. Then somebody came in and went to a corner booth. Not the person I'd been expecting, but uh, just as interesting. So I went over. Hello, Eloise. Johnny. Sit down. Oh, thanks. Expecting someone? All sorts of people. But this is a pleasant surprise. What brings you around here? Business, I thought. You know, Johnny, you've got a one-track mind. Always business. With that attitude, you miss a lot. I don't doubt it. Oh, here you are, Eloise. I... Oh, why, it's Mr. Dollar. Well, Mr. Mantell. Sit down, Gerald. I, uh... I didn't know you two knew each other. Oh, yes. We've been friends for years. As a matter of fact, it was Eloise who told me about the Sabala diamond. Oh? You didn't tell me that, Eloise. You didn't ask me, Johnny. Oh, Gerald, the head waiter seems to be signaling to you. That's so I see. I'll be right back. 
Well, uh, look, Eloise, I uh, I think I'd better be getting along. Don't leave, Johnny. Well, you've got a date with Mantel. Oh, he just wanted to have a drink with me before he left for Europe. I told him I was meeting Joe Wentworth here, so he said he'd stop by for a minute. Did Wentworth know that you and Mantell are old friends? I saw no reason to tell him, Johnny. Joe's very tiresome about things like that. You mean he's jealous? I wonder what happened to Gerald. Uh, this trip he's taking to Europe, I gather he got the idea rather suddenly. Gerald's very impulsive that way. Yeah. Well, I'll be getting along, Eloise. Looks like the man I came here to meet isn't going to show. I can't imagine what's keeping Joe. I say we've both been stood up, Johnny. Maybe we should do something about it, hmm? Well, as I told you right now, the only thing I have on my mind I is... I uh... know. That diamond. A girl could get tired of waiting, Johnny. <laughs> Eloise, I don't think you've ever waited very long for anything. See you later. I'll count on it, Johnny. Dollar? What? Oh, Wentworth. We were wondering what has happened to you. Mr. Dollar, I'm certain you're a very efficient investigator, but it seems to me that you've questioned Eloise all you need to. Oh. Uh-huh. Or have your conversations with her now reached the unofficial stage? Oh, now, look, If Wentworth. that is the case, and I suspect it is, I'd better remind you that Eloise... Maybe I'd like... better remind you of a couple of things, Wentworth. In the first Dollar. place, you... Mr. Johnny Dollar. Yeah, over here, Wentworth. Dollar. Oh. Mr. Uh, Dollar, it's a note and a package for you, sir. Gentleman just left it with me. Did he give his name? Oh, no, sir, no. But he was a short man, stocky, and he wore a gray suit. Okay, thanks. Here you go. Oh, thank you. As I started to say, Dollar... Hold on, what do you want with? Couldn't take a chance contacting you. Somebody was following me. Contents of the package will show you I know what I'm talking about. We'll contact you later. What's this all about, Dollar? It's from a man who phoned me a couple of hours ago. If it's what I think is, and this package... Yeah. Empty jewel case. Your name on it, Wentworth. What? That's the case I kept the Sabala diamond in. Yeah. See you later, Wentworth. Where are you going, Dollar? Back to my hotel room and wait to hear from him. I went outside and started for the corner to grab a cab. As I passed the alley, I spotted something sprawled on the ground. A body. It was Gerald Mantell. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. The way a man conducts himself at ease or under stress shows what he's made of. It shows his character under the strongest light. This is particularly true when a man becomes a prisoner of war. One of the points of the code of conduct of the American fighting man says, If I become a prisoner of war, I will keep faith with my fellow prisoners. I will give no information nor take part in any action which might be harmful to my comrades. If I am senior, I will take command. If not, I will obey the lawful orders of those appointed over me and will back them up in every way. The very essence of the ideals set forth in those words were displayed by Commander, later Rear Admiral, Richard Antrim in April 1942 while a prisoner of war in Macassar, Dutch East Indies during World War II. Acting instantly on behalf of a naval officer who was subjected to heavy punishment, Commander Antrim boldly tried to quiet the guard and persuade him to discuss the charges against the officer. The guard refused. Tension increased. The entire enemy prison force was faced by 2,700 allied prisoners. An order was given to continue the punishment. Suddenly, Commander Antrim, at the risk of his own life, stepped forward and volunteered to take the remainder of the punishment. This sudden move got a roar of acclaim from the inspired Allied troops and so amazed the enemy that both men were spared any further indignities or punishment. Commander Antrim's heroic and unselfish conduct brought about better conditions for the prisoners and earned new respect for American officers and men. Commander Richard Antrim upheld the highest ideals of an officer and earned for himself the Medal of Honor. And now, Act Three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the Rolling Stone Matter. Come on, Mantel. 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 Come out of it. Come on. Come on. My head. Here. I'll help you. All right, easy now. Uh, are you okay? I guess so. Well, who did it? I, I don't know, Dollar. 
The head waiter told me a taxi driver wanted to see me outside. I came out, but there was no cab in sight. I thought he might be at the corner, so I, I started walking. Past the alley here? Yes. Mr. Dollar, why would anyone want to beat me up? I can think of one possibility, Mantell. Yes? You wanted the Sabala diamond pretty badly, but Wentworth wouldn't sell at your price. Are you suggesting... I'm that... suggesting you lifted the diamond and somebody was trying to get it back from you just now. But, but I don't have the diamond. I never did. Maybe you know where it is. No, I swear I don't. As for getting beaten up just now, I'm every bit as much in the dark as you are. I didn't know whether he was telling the truth or not, but I had no proof he was lying. I had him five a dollar, even a pot of coffee in my hotel room when I tried to pull some threads together, but they didn't pull. If Mantell had the stone, who phoned me and sent the empty jewel case to convince me he had information? How did he fit? Yeah, coming. Oh, Wentworth, come in. Hey, Mr. Dollar, I, I have some information that will interest you. Yeah? Yes, sir. first, though, I, I owe you an apology for, well, flying off the handle when I saw you with Eloise at Antonio. Okay, see. okay, so you're touchy about Eloise. Now, what's the information? Well, just a few minutes ago, a man telephoned me at my apartment. Huh? Yes, I, I think he was the same one who phoned you and sent the empty jewel case. Well, what'd he say? That he knew where the diamond was, and for a price would furnish the information. Ah. Now, I wonder why he suddenly switched negotiations from me to you. Well, perhaps he thought it too dangerous to continue with you. Yeah, maybe. Speaking of danger, I wish I could locate this character before something happens to him. That's the point, Mr. Dollar. I think I know where he is. How? Huh. Well, he must have placed his call to me through a switchboard, because I heard an operator in the background saying... Hotel Maysfield. Hotel Maysfield, huh? Thanks for the lead, Wentworth. I'll check with you later. I headed for the Maysfield and described the man I was looking for to the desk clerk. The clerk said his name was Krauss, that he'd checked out that morning. This I didn't get because he'd called Wentworth from the hotel shortly before. I had the clerk let me into Krauss's room, hoping I could find some lead on where he'd gone. I did. A scratch pad with the imprint of a pencil still visible. A phone number and a name, Cathcart Hotel. I headed there fast and was referred to room 413. What? Hello, Krauss. Uh, there must be a mistake. My name is Collins. Don't give me that. Your name's Krauss, and you're the guy who phoned me and said he had information about that diamond. Oh, no, no, no. That's wrong. Oh, come on. Let's quit playing games. When you called Wentworth a while ago, he found out the name of the hotel. It's a lie. I haven't talked to him since... Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. What was lied about that phone call? Why? Because he hoped I'd find you for him. But you had talked to him earlier. Yeah, the theft of that diamond was rigged between you and Wentworth, wasn't it? And you slugged him to make it look legitimate. Well? Yeah. Yeah. But now you're hiding from Wentworth. Why? What happened to your cozy little partnership? It was blackmail, Dollar. Wentworth, don't move either of you. Well, Wentworth, it looks as though I figured you right. You thought I might have better luck finding Krauss than you had, so you gave me his last known address and followed me. Now, what's this about blackmail? I thought I could trust you, Krauss. Look, uh, I wasn't really going to blackmail you. you got to believe that. I think I get it now. Krauss was supposed to turn the stone over to you after a decent time had elapsed. Instead, he held on to it and tried to blackmail you about your being involved in the fake robbery. That's why he pretended to open negotiations with me, to scare you into buying. Yes, but you made a big mistake, Krauss, trying to blackmail a desperate man. I had no money to pay you. I needed every cent from the insurance and from what we'd get for the stone when it was cut and sold. Why, Wentworth? Why'd you need the money? For Eloise? For Eloise. Does she know about all this? No, no, she knows nothing about this. But she, she wants so many things, and I want to give them to her. I, I've got to. I've got to to hold on to her. Brother. Oh, no, you wouldn't understand. You don't know what it's like when a girl like that gets into your blood. You're willing to, to do anything. Like a couple of murders, Wentworth? You're willing to add them to your list, too? Yes. Yes, I am. Oh, now, look. Put that thing down. Why don't you stop kidding yourself about Eloise? She loves me, Dollar. I tell you, she loves me. Are you kidding? She told me what she loves. Mink and money. How long do you think she'd stick with you after the money ran out? Get back. Stay where you are. You're a thief and a fool, Wentworth. 
but you're not a killer. Stay away. So you just better give me that gun right now. Thanks. Uh, you're, you're right about Eloise. I guess I always knew it, but I just, I just couldn't face it. You just did. And you were right about me, Dollar. I'm no killer. You want to know something, Wentworth? I wasn't sure about that at all. Expense account total, including the trip home, $146 even. Remarks? Krauss handed over the diamond. He and Wentworth are both in custody. It was Wentworth who beat up Antel for hanging around Eloise. And Eloise, last I heard, she was going her merry way, having fun, as she calls it. I never did accept her invitation to join her after the diamond had been recovered, and I'm not about to. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Our star will return in just a moment. Our flag now numbers 50 stars, and behind each star, there stands yet another flag, representing one of the 50 states. The origin of Hawaii state flag has been the subject of much debate. It is now believed that it was the work of foreign advisors to King Kamehameha. Legend also has it that it was designed at the request of King Kamehameha by George Beckley, an English sea captain. The flag consists of eight horizontal and alternating stripes of white, red, and blue, representing the eight major islands in the chain. Also represented is the British Union Jack, a reminder of Captain Vancouver, who on his voyage around the world in 1794 gave King Kamehameha a British flag and the promise of British protection. The Union Jack is also a reminder of Captain James Cook, who discovered the Hawaiian Islands in 1778. Hawaii state flag, the flag of the 50th state to enter the Union, was adopted in 1845. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, well, the title of the yarn is The Ghost to Ghost Matter, and the story lives up to it. So join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Today's story was written by Robert Stanley. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Larry Dobkin, Boris Lewis, Edgar Barrier, and Don Diamond. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverley speaking. States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.